Well, thank you for coming today. Um, I'm Jennifer Hartman in the College of Education in the um, Ed Leadership Program. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, a study that I did, actually conducted the study at my previous university in New Jersey, and then finished up the research here, and, um, and now have, um, it's been published in the National Association of Secondary School Principals, which is a, a wide practitioner um, journal. And um, I'm presenting at next week at AERA um, the findings of the study. So it actually has two parts. Um, first, I want to talk about the, the background. Um, in education, we always talk about data-driven decision-making and, and evidence-based practices. Um, but a lot of the research that uh, is done um, is not used in the field for a variety of reasons. And so uh, researcher-practitioner collaboration is one vehicle for um, making research more relevant to the field and also uh, informing uh, practices. So uh, part of the, the study looks at the collaboration that actually occurred. So as a university professor, I collaborated with two different districts, a smaller district and a larger district. And um, with the knowledge of that there, what are the, the sort of the differences between uh, K-12 and university environments that can be barriers to researchers and practitioners collaborating, I'm not going to go into all those things, but there were very specific barriers that, um, that are documented in the literature. And, um, and I had specifically designed the collaborations to address those particular issues. And a key part of, the, um, of what I did was created a data sharing agreement. One of the problems with K-12 and university or inter organizational uh, collaborations is sharing confidential student data. So we had to have a, a data sharing agreement. And in that data sharing agreement that was developed, we really spelled out every aspect of the collaboration. So there was a lot of transparency that came to the relationship through that data sharing agreement. So as the university person, um, I provided a search of the literature as we were trying to collaboratively decide what we were going to study. We landed on, um, I worked with a, a math coordinator in one district and the basically the curriculum coordinator in the other district. <coughs> and we looked at um, how well the high schools or the districts were preparing students for success in college, particularly in math, because math achievement can be a real barrier for students succeeding. And uh, documented uh, research shows that uh, students who are placed in remedial math courses in college or non-credit bearing they have uh, lower success rates on a variety of different success measures. So our goal was really to avoid students taking remedial math courses. We also knew that university practices for placement varied. So we worked together to, d to come up with the research question, does the mastery of specific mathematics courses and content, such as algebra, in high school lead to first year placement and success in credit bearing post-secondary math courses. So in order to look at this, we had to collect specific data from the district and match it with district, or with the university data. Uh, we looked at the university level, we looked at the SAT scores. Um, the university used a placement test that's commonly used called AccuPlacer. And then we also looked at the first semester math course taken and success. So the sort of the meta study was about what was successful in the collaboration uh, because District 1 completed the data uh, collection. So at the university, we created the data set first, and then they uh, plugged in their information for each student. Um, but District 2 did not. We got through to the uh, district entering the data, and they didn't, they didn't complete the study. So. One of the publications really is about what was it that created success in District 1 and not in District 2 in terms of the collaboration. Um, and there were a variety of factors that went into that. That's a whole other discussion. Um, but that was an interesting outcome that 
what did we do? We did the same thing in both districts, but one was successful and one was not. So just in terms of the data themselves, and I'm not going to, it gets pretty specific, but of the one, the district that completed had 54 students, 17% were not placed in a math, college math course. Of the students who were placed, about 70% were placed in developmental math, which is, we would not want that outcome, and 30% in the credit-bearing math courses. And as it turned out, Everyone thought that the university used a variety of placement procedures looking at different math achievement. That wasn't the case. 98% of the students were placed based on AccuPlacer, which is just a one-time test where they go in and it doesn't matter what they've done uh, all along. They just are placed on this AccuPlacer. So we really then looked at what was the correlation between the SAT score, the AccuPlacer test, where they were placed, as it turned out, AccuPlacer was really not uh, any kind of value-added measure uh, in discriminating between students who are placed in developmental and credit-bearing math. And in fact, if we used SAT scores, which were already there, um, about 17 student placements would have changed. Almost 90% of those students would, would have been placed in college uh, credit-bearing courses instead of a developmental math. And a, just a couple of students would have been placed in uh, developmental math, but they took credit bearing and passed it. So, um, so we could see that there was a real need to uh, refine our placement practices at the university. So the study outcomes were that uh, we increased communication across the organizations through the collaboration. Uh, we had a data sharing agreement that could be used going forward for additional studies. Uh, we had a foundation for future collaboration. And at the university level, because they saw that they really needed to refine their placement practices, uh, as of now, they're also using SAT scores as part of the placement. I would like to see them make some additional changes, but, um, but that was at least a start in the right direction. Uh, to get more students placed in credit-bearing courses. And in the, in the district was considering um, adding some more rigorous courses in math and science at 12th grade. So a lot of the students who didn't take math in 12th grade uh, ended up in a, a developmental class, even if they'd done well previously. And so now the district has added rigorous math and science courses for 12th graders in the hopes that they will be better prepared for college. So that's my study.